All right, and we are live for today's Thursday q and I'm happy to be here. Let me know what questions you guys have for me. Drop them in the chat box below. I'll be monitoring questions on Facebook, YouTube, Periscope, as well as Instagram we have running here. So let me know what questions you guys have for me. I'm happy to answer anything you want help with, whether it's about Amazon, general entrepreneurship, being a nomad, or anything else. Just let me know. Put them in the chat box. I'm really excited for it. All right, so while I wait for a few of these questions to pile up, if you guys aren't already following along with the Million Dollar Case Study, let me tell you about it real quick. We are publicly building, launching, and scaling an Amazon physical products business up to a million dollars in revenue. We're sharing every last detail as we do it along the way, so you can follow along. You can watch over our shoulder as we build this business. We're sharing what products we sell and everything else. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure to follow along. And we're donating all the money to charity, which is super cool. If you haven't already signed up for it, jungloscout.com forward slash million, you can find all the details there and you can sign up to make sure that you uh, get notified of all the upcoming webinars. All right, good morning. Hello, 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 hello. We have lots of people joining. Hello to you all. I'm excited for you to be here. All right, we have people joining from Sweden, from Florida, Texas, all over the place. What are your advices on prep? My advice on prep is to do the least amount possible yourself. So I personally don't do any of the prep myself. I get everything done actually, or everything that the factory can do, they do. So like I don't sticker lay products myself. Like the factory puts the sticker on my packaging for me. Um, I don't do anything else. Like if I wanna like bundle stuff, I don't do any of that myself. I have all that done at the factory level. And that's what I'd encourage you guys to do because it's the least amount of work for you and it's the easiest to do. They don't charge very much for like doing these types of things. And like for example, like the FNSQ label, I just print that directly on my um, packaging. So that's what I'd recommend for you guys to do. All right. Let's see here. Just sent my first product to Amazon. What's the best way to launch it? This is from Enderjet Noda. First of all, congratulations for sending your first product to Amazon. That's amazing. That's an awesome milestone to hit. So congratulations. What I would recommend to launch it is um, uh, a little bit of a combination of different things, okay? When I launch a product, I do multiple things. So I do coupon giveaways. So I'm giving away coupons to shoppers so they can purchase my product at a discount. This increases sales velocity. It gets you sales, which may or which will likely lead in rev to reviews. Of course, I use JumpSend to do so because it's one of our products. But if you know another website they can give away coupons on, that's of course, you could probably achieve the same thing. A lot of people tell us jump send is the best, but that's up for you to decide. I also turn on PPC and bid pretty aggressively. So the goal of doing both of those things is just trying to increase sales velocity, just trying to get initial sales on Amazon, okay? So that's what you need to be thinking about. The other thing that I sometimes do is decrease my price for the first month or two. And the purpose of that, again, is just to increase sales velocity. So don't plan on like, trying to make a lot of money like the first month. The first month, your goal is to get sales. And from your sales, you'll then increase your ranking. Um, you'll be making sales and sales organically just lead to reviews. Um, so that's how I would recommend to launch your product. How important is it to use social media when selling on Amazon? Are you supposed to create new accounts or use your old ones? I have never used any social media stuff for um, any of the products I sold Amazon, and I've sold tens of millions of dollars worth now, so I would say um, it's not important at all. Um, in my experience, trying to drive sales from outside sources, whether that's your social or Google or Facebook ads or whatever else, to me is a little bit of a waste of time. I've experimented with a whole bunch of this stuff and it's like, sure, you can get like a few sales off it if you like try really hard. But if you just like devote that same amount of time into like just making your listing better and like launching more products, um, it pays off like way more at the end, in my opinion. It's like the 80, 20 of selling on Amazon, like the 20% of actions that produce 80% of the results. 
are you know like finding new products, launching new products, optimizing your listing there. Um, things like trying to drive extra sales from social and stuff. That would be like the eighty percent of stuff that doesn't make it really that big of a difference. Is your million dollar case study a good enough replacement for a course? Adam Whitman Adam Whitman said this. We don't leave out any detail throughout the million dollar case study of how we're launching this product. I, I think like some people are under the impression that like we share some stuff but not everything or whatever. We're sharing, I swear, I promise you, we're sharing every last thing throughout the million dollar case study of what goes on to launch this product. A lot of people tell us that it's like the best educational resource on the whole internet, paid or free. Um, but that's up for you. That's up to you to decide. I don't have any problem personally paying for courses. I pay for a lot of courses myself. Um, you know, like one thing about paying for courses and sometimes that's just like the extra motivation people need to actually like go through and view the whole thing. So in my opinion, the million dollar case study is, you know, there's plenty of information there to help you launch your product. But if you think like some other paid courses and stuff are going to help you, then totally go for it. You know, I'm, I'm like a big fan of just like getting the education that you need to like feel confident about getting started. Irma said, Greg, I bought Jungle Stumps for a friend. They were very happy with it. Thank you very much, Irma. Um, and he said, excellent work on the Million Dollar Case Study. Loving the great content. Fantastic. I'm glad you're enjoying it. <coughs> Excuse me. Is there a fee I need to think about when selling to German customers from a UK FBA center? This is a good question, and I'm not paused about all the details um, about this, unfortunately, just because I don't have too much experience yet selling in the EU. So I'm not quite sure what like the pan-European type uh, fees would be, and like I guess how much additional they would be. So maybe we'll, someone else can chime in. Um, I'll know more about that soon. Larissa said, hey, Greg, you made me finally start my Amazon journey. Congratulations. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Do you think it's too risky to sell on Amazon if this is your only way to earn money? No. For a long time, my only source of income was just selling on Amazon. I used to, some of you guys know this, but I used to have a corporate job, I worked as a civil engineer. I quit that job, my only source of income was selling on Amazon, and that's what I lived off for a while. I still have my Amazon business, and it still does well. Um, there's like Amazon is here, and it's around to stay. I think Amazon is going to be a good opportunity for years and years to come. Um, all the other experts I kind of talk to agree. I mean, like if you just look at them and like look at all the acquisitions they're making and follow with them on the like, stock market and see like their user growth, like they're around and here to stay. It doesn't worry me that much about being very reliant on their platform because, um, like in general, if you follow the Amazon rules, they're pretty good to sellers. Sellers often times like complain about them quite a bit. But if you compare them to like everyone else out there, like all the other platforms you can sell on, they actually treat their sellers really well, and I'm not worried about it. So no, I don't think that's too risky, but that, that's up to you and your own risk tolerance. How can I buy insurance for my products if I'm in Canada and wanting to sell in the USA? Good question. All right, so I have insurance for some of my products. But I'm an American. It is from a, a US-based insurance company. I'm trying to think. I guess you would have to get quotes probably. I don't think like a US-based insurance company would give it to you as a Canadian or as anyone else. Um, so you probably need to look into it in your home country. Uh, I'd probably start on Google. I'm sorry, I don't really know any resources for um, Canadian insurance for your products. How many hours of research does it currently take you to find a product worth launching? So I can find a product worth launching probably like in an hour or two. However, keep in mind, like I've been doing this a long time now. I'm the founder of Jungle Scout, which is a product research tools. So like I know the ins and out of it, outs of it very well. I don't think that's quite fair to say that like everyone else could also find a product in an hour or two. However, a lot of people do tell me like they find, you know, like a product that they want to launch like the first day or whatever. 
I think a, a large part of this is um, a lot of people like find products that could potentially be very good products to launch. However, they're like not quite sure whether or not like that's the one or they should keep searching or what. And I think they kind of get like stuck in this phase of, um, you know, like, is this the right one or will I be able to find a better one? So I'd say at some point, once you feel confident that like you've done let's say maybe like five or 10 hours of product research. If you like, you have a few good ones at that point, you just can't decide. At some point, you just gotta go for it and you'll learn so much from the process. If I'm launching a product with three size variations, what size ASIN or price point should I advertise with PPC? Um, I'm guessing like the pictures for all of these for all your sizes are probably the same. Generally, like when people sell like t-shirts, or I don't know your song, but like t-shirts or whatever else, it's just like one picture of the t-shirt and then you can select the sizes. In that case, it doesn't matter. If the pictures are different, for example, if you have variations that have different colors, I would advertise through PPC the, the most popular one because that's gonna be like the, uh, like the best click-through ratio and get the most people onto your particular listing. Let's see here. We need jumps in the UK. I know. <laughs> I agree. I've been telling the developers that for so long. No, they're working on it right now. We're set to launch jumps in the UK in October. So it's coming soon. Just stick around a few more weeks. How are Joe Snugs doing now? Are they selling well? Richard Thompson asked this. They're doing well. So our goal when we launch this, my goal when I launch all products, is I wanna sell a minimum of 10 per month, okay? Um, the, so that's like 300 units total. In the past month, I think the pink ones have sold about 400 or 450. The white ones, uh, around 150 or 200. And the blue ones are our worst. They're doing like 150 a month. But if you combined all of those, that's like seven, maybe like 700 units per month, roughly. Um, so they're doing about twice as well as what I had hoped. So yeah, it's good, 700 units per month. Um, yeah, I, I forget exactly how much profit we're making on a future one or whatever, but yeah, they're doing really well. Um, do you know if the Amazon UK will disconnect from the other EU Amazons due to Brexit? I don't have a clue. I don't think anyone knows all the details of what Brexit's gonna uh, entail. So don't let that scare you or slow you down. Just, you know, keep keep going with it. Um, when should you launch your second product? AirSync said this and they also said, you are great. <laughs> Thank you, AirSync. You should launch your second product as soon as you have the capital to do so and you feel comfortable doing so. The easiest way to scale up on Amazon, and uh, you'll hear me say this a million times, is to add more SKUs. It's not to like try to squeeze out that last one extra sale per week, it's to add more SKUs. So as soon as you have the capital, you know, the money to purchase more inventory and launch another product, that's when I'd probably do it if I was you. Can't sound fair, are you going this October, Greg? If so, are you gonna have a meetup one night? Vaughn Clements asks this. So in the past, um, uh, we've done a, done a couple meetups in um, Hong Kong around the time of the Canton Fair. It's an opportunity, you know, a lot of Amazon sellers are in China around that time. Unfortunately, this October, I'm not going to China. So I won't be at the Canton Fair and we won't be holding a meetup, so I apologize. Um, maybe the springtime. This, this fall is just really busy. We have a lot of exciting stuff going on with the software. So I'm kind of trying to focus all my efforts on continuing to prove it. And we have, like, like I said, a lot of really exciting stuff coming up. Is it worth starting a website for brand registry if you only have a couple products? Starting a website's very easy to do. Um, you can use something like WordPress or Squarespace or like a Shopify store or whatever else. And probably like in a couple hours, even if you've never set up a website in your whole life, you could probably figure that out and launch it. So, I mean, I would like just at some point, like when you have some time and like you're just looking to like have kind of like a fun little afternoon project or whatever, I'd probably go ahead and put up a website around it so you can do the brand registry. 
However, keep in mind now with Brand Registry 2.0, you also need a trademark for Brand Registry, not to sell on Amazon, just for Brand Registry. So I've been, uh, I've been, um, Hey, Greg, I've been trying to register for Jungle Scout for two days and the website cannot accept my email. That's really strange. Sorry about that. If you want to just shoot us a quick email, just at hello at jungleScout.com. We'll figure out what your problem is. We'll figure out what the problem is with that email and we'll make sure to get you set up. So sorry about that. Um, hey, Greg, can you recommend starting retail arbitrage or online arbitrage to build up capital start PL? Um, yeah, that's not a bad way to go. Um, in my opinion, like retail arbitrage and stuff, that's not a very like long-term sustainable, like business opportunity. It's not like you're not creating a business that has systems to make you money without like having to put in additional work. And at the end of the day, that's like what we all should be striving to do. So yes, if like your goal is like to do that, to build up capital, to be able to purchase private label products, that's probably a good way to go. And that way you can also kind of learn about how Amazon works. Just gonna grab a couple more on Instagram. Greg, is 30 days for a shipment to arrive too long? No, 30 days for a shipment when shipping by ocean is uh, typical. That'd be like the average, probably, standard. Um, if you're shipping by like air, then yeah, 30 days is, seems ridiculous. All right, cool. That's all in there. Let me switch over and grab a few Facebook questions. How can you determine if a bundle will be a good idea or not? I found two products that one is very competitive and the other not so much, both selling well but never packed together. This is uh, kind of difficult. Um, I think you have to ask yourself, like, do, are you confident that people are interested in purchasing these together? Um, a good way to check that would be to see like the frequently bought together session. Do those normally show up in you know the frequently bought together section? That would be a good um, indicator. Um, yeah, and then I guess like if each of them individually are doing well, then again that would be like another good indicator. Um, yeah. I think after that, you know, it's like if both of them have high demand and you're confident people would, are interested in buying these things together, or one of them is very cheap and you can essentially like offer it for free, then I think it's a potentially good opportunity. Can you please explain the new opportunity score in the Jungle Scout extension? What is a good score to go for? So we released a new design of the Jungle Scout extension uh, a few weeks or maybe even a month ago now. And in the top right, you'll see the opportunity score. This shows up on any search page on Amazon. And what we've done here is we created um, an algorithm. So we created some logic that takes into account like the demand, the competition, um, a few of those things. And we're trying to gauge the overall opportunity. So it's on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best. Tens are extremely hard to find. Um, but you know, a lot of like seven, eights, nines, those are oftentimes very good opportunities. With that being said, I'll go ahead and put a disclaimer in here that at the end of the day, computers are only so smart right now. And at the end of the day, it does take like a human, you know, like it's very hard for a computer or to write software to be able to identify some potential pitfalls, like uh, potentially, um, you know, maybe a, a product's like patented. So it's doing really well, like no competition, but it's because like, all right, this one seller, you know, our one uh, company has a patent on this, so they're the only one selling it. So, yeah, that that's, uh, should give you the, kind of the gist of it. All right. What defect rates should we accept from factories? Amazon will boot you at returns 1%. So do we have to negotiate with factories to be pretty near 0%? Is that realistic? Um, Amazon won't boot you at 1%. Amazon, so I've had um, a lot of listings temporarily suspended by Amazon before because my, 
return rate was too high. There's, uh, I don't exactly know like what algorithm they use, but all of the listings that this happened to had returns like up around the 10% mark. So like one out of 10 people were returning these things. It's very easy to get it reinstated, um, but 10% is a very bad return rate, obviously. Like in general, all my Amazon products combined have probably like one and a half or 2% um, return rate. So 10% is very bad. Um, the initial question from Terrence was, what defect rate should we accept from the factories? If I guess the other difficult thing is just because you're getting returns doesn't actually mean that it was like a factory defect. Oftentimes, that's just people who like ordered it, they didn't want it anymore, so that so they don't have to pay return shipping. They just select like the option that it's like a defective product or whatever. So, um, yeah, I'd say if two percent or more of products are like legitimately defective from the factory, then at that point, that's when I'd start to say, okay, there's kind of like QC quality control concerns. Um, oftentimes you can also tell the factory that they need to include 2% more product at no cost to make up for that. Oftentimes uh, factories will do that. Um, yeah, but it's not realistic to have 0% uh, defect or hate. Do you recommend calling customers on the phone or sending postcards in order to thank them and ask for a review? Tom Scully asks this. Um, not really. If anyone ever, I don't know, I've never done this before, but if someone called me and asked me for a review, I'd be like, who is this? You're an Amazon seller? I thought I bought that directly from Jeff Bezos. Uh, why are you calling me? I don't know. The postcards might actually work just because that's um, quite like out of the ordinary. However, I don't know, are you going to write these things yourself? That seems like a lot of work. If they're just kind of like mass printed, they lose the, uh, yeah, I probably wouldn't do either. Uh, I never have before. I'd probably just maybe stick an insert inside the packaging. And the other thing is just make sure to set up an email uh, tool like JumpSend to automatically send emails to these people asking them for reviews. Danny asks, thoughts on the best way to structure your Amazon seller account? as it is attached to your buyer account and you can't transfer listings or accounts with the vision to sell your brand or products long-term? This is a good question. Um, I'll tell you what most people do. Um, I think even though it's like against Amazon's terms of service to transfer seller accounts, that is, from my understanding, what I, I talk to the guys at Empire Flippers about this. That is what most people do. They say, like, here's my login, change the bank account, change the LLC if you want, or maybe the LLC came with the acquisition, um, and they just start using that account. And I don't, it doesn't seem like they ever had problems with it. Um, keep in mind, though, that like you said in here, you say you can't transfer listings. Um, that's not necessarily true. Like, remember, like you don't own these listings. They're Amazon's listings that you have control to edit. So like the most like kind of like white hat way to do these would be, uh, you work out some transition period with a buyer. They start sending in, you know, like any reorders they do instead of you, they go to their account and then they start listing their products on essentially your listings. Um, that would be like the most like white hat and like most like, or like the most correct way to do it. However, as you can imagine, that's like, it'd be a huge hassle during this transition period of four or six months or however, I don't know, like what your slowest moving items are. Um, but yeah, it's something to think about. I'd probably... The guys at Empire Flippers actually are a really good resource for this. Just empireflippers.com. They're selling a lot of Amazon businesses these days. Um, so if this is something you know you want to do in the future, it might be worth reaching out to them to see like if they have any other tips. Candace asks, I'm ready to place my first order with the factory now. Where can I find a good contract? What do I need to be aware of? Would you negotiate price on your first order? Lots of questions. We have a contract on our blog. Um, just go back and look at the million dollar case study. It's under the free resources section. Uh, we give you a template. You can copy and paste it. Just change out your product, your name, that stuff, and you can use it. I don't have the exact link, but I'm sure you can find it. 
Would you negotiate price on your first order? Absolutely, I would. Um, yeah. Who's the furry friend behind Greg? That's Watson. You can kind of see him a little. He's huge. He's a, um, I forget what kind of dog it is. A big fluffy one. <laughs> uh, do you return your competitor's samples? No, I'm just going to hang on to them. I think that's not a nice thing to do. The opportunity score is confusing sometimes. It's giving me different numbers for the same details. It gives six for high demand, low competition, sometimes seven for medium demand, low competition. Can you explain why? So we try to like make this very easy to understand. So um, the score isn't only related or isn't only based off the high demand or low competition or whatever text. It's based off an algorithm that like we're kind of running in the back end. And then we just kind of have three tiers to help you understand this, like high com competition, medium competition, or low competition. So, um, yeah. What are your thoughts on starting to sell in the first quarter in any category? Is it slow? There's still tons and tons of sales on Amazon first quarter. If you compare it to fourth quarter, yes, it's slow. But if you compare first, second, or third quarter to fourth, it's slow. So, yeah, the first quarter is a good time to start selling on Amazon. Is there a chance to have success if our competitor is Amazon? Absolutely. Amazon's actually my favorite competitor. A lot of people think I'm crazy, but it's true. Amazon does a really poor job of optimizing their listings. They don't run PPC. Um, they don't care about these products. You don't have to worry about them trying to do anything shady, like maybe leaving a bad review or anything else. So. And I'm specifically talking about private labeling where you're not competing for the buy box against Amazon. So if you're creating a listing to compete against an, uh, an Amazon, uh, a listing that Amazon sells on, then that's my favorite or best case scenario. Are we late to Q4 if we're sending our first batch of inventory this weekend? Q4 doesn't start for three more days. So no, you're not late. <laughs> um, yeah, there's. Uh, I haven't even really seen like sales start to pick up for Q4. They don't generally do that until like the middle of November or something. So, uh, yeah, you're not you're not late. Uh, let's see here. Hey Greg, Amazon suspended my account two hours after creating it. They're asking for a business license and active listings. However, I don't have any of those. Yeah, they do this, um, I think, for about everybody now. So they're not picking on you. Just after you sign up, they say it's suspended, but it's essentially, I mean, it's just like, essentially you don't really have an account yet because you still have to provide some of those documents that they're asking for. So don't get discouraged. You just have to provide the stuff they're asking for. Blue Checker rallying for the likes. I like it, Blue Checker. Thank you very much. That's awesome. And if you guys are enjoying this, give me the, the little like or the, the, the heart on Instagram or the thumbs up or whatever else. Hey, Greg, I just heard Amazon isn't allowing new sellers past October. Can you elaborate on this? Thanks, man. I have not heard of this. You may be confusing this um, with when Amazon recommends that you send, or you may be confusing this specifically with the toy category. The only official announcement I've heard from Amazon is with the toy category. If you haven't like already sold, sent in a shipment or done a certain amount of sales, I forget the exact details, they won't allow you to send in um, a toy item past October. But as far as I know, unless they just sent something out you know, this morning or when I was asleep or whatever, um, they're still allowing new sellers. I just bought ASIN Inspector to double check results and the sales numbers between your extension and theirs is huge. Thoughts? <laughs> well, I do have some thoughts on this. I've spoken to quite a few people who kind of run like these other companies or, you know, that have like these other products and stuff. And 
as far as I know, there's no other company out there that actually has like a data science team and engineers specifically working on this potential or this uh, working on estimating sales accurately. It's more so they create some kind of rough algorithm um, like in the early days and they just use it forever and kind of never update it. Uh, in comparison, at Jungle Scout, we have one full-time PhD data scientist and we have two engineers devoted to this specific problem. So one's a machine learning engineer. This is what he's, you know, like building the system. So from all the testing we've done, ours is much, much, much more accurate than anyone else, any other product out there. So yeah, you just, um, I would like encourage you to kind of like check it against your own products and stuff. And I think, or even if like you just Google this and like read the reviews, you'll like, you'll see that a lot of other um, unbiased opinions are kind of back up what I say here that like ours are the most accurate. Um, should we get our bulk order sent to us first to check before we ship it to Amazon or is it okay to have it sent directly to Amazon? I send all my products directly to Amazon Oftentimes, I think like beginners, they'll want to like ship it to their house or something to like look at it or like see what they just spent all their money on. However, that is, um, that seems like a lot of work to me. Like you have to like unload these boxes at your house and there's of course like an additional cost because then you're shipping them from your house into Amazon, that type of stuff. So um, yeah, I would recommend if you're not comfortable with the quality control aspect of it to just get an inspection done at the factory instead of at your house, but yeah, it's kind of up to you. Carlos asks, how much should I usually ask for a discount from a Chinese supplier on the first order? What percentage would you recommend? This is very difficult and negotiating, I don't think it's one of my strong suits. However, what you can do is, I would get, quotes from like as many factories as you can. And then you usually have a pretty good idea of what like the ballpark number should be. And there's usually some outliers. Like usually it's like, okay, this dude's clearly ripping me off because he's like twice as expensive as anyone else out there. And sometimes there's like some weirdly low ball numbers. And it's kind of like, well, did they get like the quality? Like, did they get like the spec sheet right? Is, are we like comparing apples to apples here? Um, so, and then generally what I do to negotiate or try to get better pricing is I just say something along the lines of like, you know, like I like working with you, but this other factory is offering me this price and it's like a dollar cheaper or I don't know, 10% cheaper or whatever. Like, are you able to match it? And it's, it's the best if you do legitimately have like three decent factories and you legitimately are about to like go with a different one. Cause I think it's like, it's kind of hard to BS that I think unless like you're a really good negotiator. But if you're legit, legitimately about to be like, hey, I'm actually going to go with them because they're like a dollar cheaper. Like, can you do a dollar fifty cheaper and see what they say? Um, sometimes they seem pretty open to negotiating. Other times they uh, don't and are like, oh, we'll knock off three cents. And then, yeah, I don't know. So hopefully that helps a little. <laughs> Greg. Who are your mentors? Good question. I need some more mentors. This is like, I think an area I could probably improve on. My dad has always been a good mentor of mine. He's an entrepreneur himself. Um, he, especially in the early days, is who I've often gone to to ask questions about all these different stuff I had. So if you're watching dad, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I would just find someone out there, you know, like if you're looking for a mentor, I'd find someone, someone out there who is like a little bit further along than you are. Um, it's really nice, like to be able to ask people, this is like, it's like kind of a, one of the reasons I do these Q and A sessions, like try to help, try to be kind of like a mentor to some of you guys, because oftentimes it's easy to like get stuck or hung up at a particular point. And if like, you can just get past that one little roadblock and like, that can be kind of like what you need uh, to do well. Should I be wary of a supplier in China asking for 100% wire transfer to pay before they start manufacturing the product? Yes, 100% upfront payment terms are BS. Um, 30% down, 70% is good. 
50% up front, and then 50% when the goods are shipped is, I'd say, probably more common. It also, I think, depends on the product. For certain products where it's like the large amount of the cost associated with it is in the raw materials, oftentimes it seems like for those, I have to put down like 50% deposit, where if um, maybe the cost is more so like in the labor, then it seems like um, some of those, maybe I only have to put down 30% deposit to start. But um, 100% upfront is, uh, yeah, that's those are garbage payment terms, and I would say a red flag. Hey, Greg, I want to start with the product, but want to know. The other FBA, they are selling in packs, like three packs and six packs, so I need to list each pack with one UPC or only one for all packs. This is a good question. This is actually, this is Jeff Bezos, if you're watching. This is a good area you guys can improve. But right now, in order to sell like a one pack and a three pack and a six pack on Amazon, you have to actually bundle that three pack and six pack together. You have to put it all in a, um, in like the same bag or whatever packaging, and then one FN SKU on the outside of that. Okay. So you can't just send in all individual units to Amazon and have them like and th like then you can't put together like a three pack and have amazon like just ship three of the single units that being said there is like this little hack where like you could do a three pack do an fbm when someone purchases it you could do a uh fulfillment order a manual fulfillment order in the back end and actually just ship them three but i wouldn't really do that Did you learn to code to build Jungle Scout? No, I did not. I wish I knew how to code, but that is something that takes a lot of time to master. It's like the developers on our team, you know, like a lot of these guys have six, eight, 10, 15 years of experience, and it takes very high end and very quality developers to make great products. So, it just wasn't realistic for me to spend the next 10 years of my life mastering the skill to like hold off to start Jungle Scout. So I hired uh, very skilled developers. All right. How do you exactly negotiate without sounding unprofessional and cheap? I wouldn't worry about sounding unprofessional and cheap. Um, I think this is typically true, and I guess I'm just more familiar with like North America culture because that's where I grew up. Um, generally, in North America, like we don't negotiate for like anything. Uh, you know, like the price is pretty much as stated, besides with the exception of maybe like a car or a house. Um, you have to remember, like in a lot of other cultures, like negotiating is very common and almost like expected. Like the price is never the price. Um, so, and that's true in China too. Like they are expecting you probably to negotiate. So, um, yeah, I, like I think the best way to negotiate is, like I said, like legitimately if you have multiple factories and like you don't really need any individual one, I mean, then I usually just like tell them this. It's like, you're nice to work with, but like this dude's giving me, it's like $2 cheaper. Like, is that something you can work with? And sometimes they just say like, no, it's like, okay, well, I'm just gonna go with the dude who's legitimately two days cheaper. It also helps like if you're not in a rush and you have time, because then you can just be like, well, that price isn't really good enough for me. You know, my margins would be too thin, so I think I'm gonna pass on this. And then oftentimes, like if you say stuff like that, they'll come back like a week later and like, oh hey, like I actually can do a little bit better. Um, it also just depends like how bad the factory wants the order. If they're about to have a gap in their production line and they don't have any orders to fill it then they're willing to offer a lesser price in order to keep the factory workers um, working. If they have like this backlog of like four months worth of orders and they're like, I'm not you know, making that crap for you for like that cheap price. So yeah, there, there's no like certain, I guess like rules of thumbs I don't think that can give you. Is packaging design important on your first product? Uh, we got this question in Instagram. Um, I wouldn't get hung up on packaging design. It is a way that you can improve your uh, product. You can increase the perceived value of your product. Um, so yeah, like if it seems like something, and it also kind of depends like on the type of product. For example, like our sleeping bags, 
we're not really going to do any nice packaging. We're actually just going to put it in a poly bag with a nice insert and a label on it. But like if I ordered like something like if I like open up my iPhone and it had crappy packaging, then like right away the perceived value and my like my quality impressions would be pretty low. So it kind of depends on the product a little bit too. But the most important thing for everyone listening to this, if you haven't gotten started, is getting started and not getting kind of hung up on things like that. Are we safe to just use the product tracker feature? I'm assuming you mean inside the Jungle website, uh, the Jungle Scout web app, and not the 999 method. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the product tracker automates all that stuff for you, so you don't have to manually go in there and hit 999 stuff anymore. When did you start paying yourself from your Amazon business instead of reinvesting in your business? This is a good question, and I don't, exactly remember but what i can tell you is especially when starting out like the biggest downfall to selling private label products on amazon is the capital required you know the money required to purchase this inventory so the less you can pay yourself so maybe this means um like for a certain amount of time live, living more frugal than what you normally would, or maybe you can cut costs other ways, the quicker you can grow your business. If you're paying yourself pretty much all those profits, then it's very difficult to grow your business because it takes cash to grow these businesses, especially if you're trying to get, grow very quickly. Once you do, once you kind of have learned the ropes and figure out how it works, there are other ways um, to get cash to invest in this business specifically like Amazon lending or um, other type of like loans or whatever for small businesses. However, now we're getting into like a little bit different uh, territory. Personally, I am a believer um, of using other people's money to invest in your business in order to grow it quick more quickly. However, to some people like that might kind of sound scary or maybe like lending's not available for you if you live in another country or something like that. So those are all kind of things you can think about. Uh, let's see here. When we be able to run the JS apps from our Android or iPhones for that reason? Um, so unfortunately, Google Chrome doesn't offer extensions to run on mobile devices, so your smartphones and tablets. Um, we do have a native Android and iOS app um, on our product roadmap. However, I'm not quite sure exactly the release date for those. Maybe Q1 uh, of next year, but it's kind of hard to tell. We have like we have so much cool stuff we're working on right now, um, and we only have like I think 13 or 14 developers now. So it just takes like a lot of manpower to be building all this stuff. So hopefully sooner than later, but we'll see. I'll let you know if I know any updates. Um. Hey Greg, a question about Europe. This is from Talal. Can you give the estimated shipping price and time to arrive for the product? Um, I can't give you an estimated shipping price because I don't know uh, how, how big it is, uh, which method you're trying to use or anything like that. What I would recommend is we just did a million dollar case study yesterday. With We brought on Flexport, which is a freight forwarder. And I would bet if you watch that, you'll be able to figure out the answer to all of your questions because I, we drilled them pretty hard. Um, it was a very good session about uh, shipping specifically to Europe. I think they even gave some rules of thumbs you could use for prices, but if not, you could always get a quote. Dima asked, what do you think about selling random products versus starting a brand? Personally, I think you should just sell anything on Amazon that people are buying. Other, uh, maybe kind of like influencers or gurus or whatever, like in the space, um, would disagree. some people disagree with me on this. However, some people say like, oh, you need to like be starting like this nice, like cohesive brand and blah, 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 blah. Um, the truth of it 
is Amazon shoppers go to Amazon, they type into the search bar what they're they're looking for. They then, you know, like look at the results based off like the reviews and the price and the pictures and whatever else they decide what they're going to buy and they check out. They're not searching for your brand, especially your private label brand, because they don't know about it. Okay. So like if you have a desire like to, um, you know, whatever, like try to get this thing like into like Walmart or like whatever else, I don't know what you're maybe like, you want to start like a brick and mortar store that sells your, uh, whatever coffee mugs and coffee grinders to the same place. And that's fine. But Amazon's where all the sales are at right now. They aren't searching for your brand. They're just searching for products. So in my opinion, it's like, well, why don't you just sell whatever products are the best opportunity and just like give the shoppers what they're looking for instead of like trying to launch other things in the brand that might be like kind of crap opportunities. So like we started out with bamboo marshmallow sticks. Um, you know, like from that, we didn't go try to sell like uh, plates to put your s'mores on or something. Um, because like that was a crap opportunity. We started selling hooded baby towels because they were a good opportunity. And like it shows, like I said, there's something like six or 700 units a month. So, um, yeah, in my opinion, just sell whatever is the best opportunity, not necessarily what the brand is. Like, you know, like I said, like people aren't sh you know, like searching for like jungle sticks. They don't know my brand name. They're just searching like bamboo sticks and then purchasing that one particular product. Holy smokes, already 46. All right, I have time for about a few more questions that I got to run. Um, can I start selling a few items in the beginning? Uh, if I have the available cash to invest in producing the products. Yeah, absolutely. Um, start small, get started, make money off that, reinvest it, and grow your business from there. Um... This is as so Albert said, my units are oversized and 24 pounds. So I'm thinking about pulling some out in Q4 due to peak fees. It'll be $6,000 in storage fees to leave it, $5,000 to pull it, but I might run out of inventory in December. Recommendations. This is tricky. Um, and I, I don't have a great recommendation for you because I don't know like all the details about your specific scenario. Um, it's helpful if you've been selling this for more than a year because then you have kind of data to look at from last q4 about how much your uh how much your sales increase um my best advice for you albert is to just kind of like run the math which it seems like you kind of already have you could you know keep in mind like you could pull just like a few units of inventory and then have them to be ready to ship back in um yeah uh, sorry, I don't quite have a better answer for you. Hey, Greg, have you ever had to cancel an order from a supplier and get your deposit back due to poor quality production of products? Irma Viesis. No, I've never had to do that. I've had lots of failed inspections. Okay, so when they go inspect products, they have like all these different categories, and it's allowed to have like one major, whatever, zero critical defects, and a few minor, whatever. Oftentimes, these fail inspections. However, the factory has always been able to work with me to make corrections in order to pass the inspection. Um, canceling an order and getting your deposit back generally isn't an option. I think the supplier would tell you to get lost if you ask to do that because. Like they're making a custom run, you know, like a custom product, like just for you. Um, yeah. So that's generally how it works. Has anybody become a millionaire from selling on Amazon? There are lots of millionaires from selling on Amazon. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm in like a number of groups, uh, you know, a few of these like are private groups for people who, um, you know, I think like one, the, the threshold is you have to be over like a half million dollars a month in sales. Um, so yeah, those guys are doing very well. Uh, yeah. If you think like a half million sales, it's like 6 million bucks a year. If your margins are 20 or 25%. Um, they're doing quite well. Does Amazon not take toys into their warehouse anymore? Um, you can Google this to find out the exact details. I just skimmed over this, but Every year that I can remember, so at least for the past two, three, four years, 
Amazon has not allowed new sellers in the toys category during Q4. Like you had to have like your first shipment in, I think by like, I don't know, the middle of October or something, Google it and find it. Um, but yeah, that's how it works. So like if you've already sent, all right, I think the threat, if I remember right, the threshold is like uh, how many dollars or maybe how many units you sold in the toys and games category. But essentially what they're trying to prevent is just brand new sellers selling for like toys and games for like two months on Amazon during Q4 and then getting out. All right, Dan asked, did you get your Jungle Snugs brand registered as a trademark in the end? It was going to be a test as part of doing the same for the Europe Million Dollar Case Study. I submitted applications for Jungle Sticks and Jungle Snugs. Jungle Sticks should be ready like any day because that was like at the beginning of this year when I submitted that. Jungle Snugs was a little bit later. What I've decided to do, Danny, instead of registering individual ones, is I'm just gonna register Jungle Creations and any new products I launch throughout the Million Dollar Case Study, the brand is gonna be Jungle Creations. So like we're calling our sleeping bags like Jungle Slumber. Uh, yeah, the name's kinda lame, but we wanted a JS name. <laughs> um, it's gonna be like Jungle Slumber by Jungle Creations under the brand section of Amazon Seller Central. It's gonna have Jungle Creations and then that's just gonna be the one trademark I'm gonna use for all these products now in the case study so I don't have to keep individually registering trademarks. And I would actually recommend the same thing for most of you guys. Of course, the downside to that is that we don't have, we lose a little bit of the legal protection if someone were to try to rip off our trademark, but I'm actually not very concerned with that. All right, two more questions. The Bootstrap Boutique, hey Greg, what are you excited about for 2018. Can't believe we're in Q4 next week. I'm excited about a lot for 2018. Jungle Scout has a lot of exciting things going on um, that I'm super stoked about. We have some really exciting stuff coming out for our software. The team's growing quickly and with the larger team, we have a lot more resources to build lots more cool stuff. So for the software, we're also working on, we're constantly trying to raise the bar as far as the educational content we put out. Um, I'm excited for the, the progress of the million dollar case study into 2018. As you know, our goal is a million bucks. We're getting close to $400,000 in sales. I think we're probably like, I don't know, 360 or 380 or something, but we still have a long way to go. Um, so I'm excited to see the sales for that. So yeah, um, I'm really excited for 2018. I think it's gonna be the best year yet. I'm still really bullish on Amazon. I'm very confident, still a tremendous opportunity. So yeah, it's exciting. Um, Danny said, get your profit to 30K a month and sell it for a million to Empire Flippers. That might be an easy way to get to our uh, the million dollar goal. <laughs> we'll see. All right. What time is it? 53, all right, one, let me try to grab. Uh, this is a quick one coming to use for inspection. Uh, v Trust or Asia Inspection, I think are like the two biggest. But like if you Google China Inspection, uh, you'll find a whole bunch of them. Do you think video content has a large effect on sales? Seems like I notice more and more video content. Does it impact it a lot? With Brand Registry 2.0, you're able to upload. Uh, this is they were doing like a beta rollout, so it might not be available to everyone yet, but it probably will in the next like few weeks or whatever. FBA sellers or so third-party sellers are able to upload videos to their listing, which is awesome. Does it uh, impact sales? Probably so. I don't have any of them yet on my listing because. The downside of videos is they are like more time consuming and costly to shoot, but I would guess that they do positively impact sales. I know personally when I are looking at products on Amazon, I oftentimes watch those videos, I like them. All right.
Bootstrap Boutique, I'm excited too. So much in the fire right now. I agree. I'm trying to pick one last Gilbert to finish on. All right. Um, I'll, I'll ask this one. I think people probably, numerous people probably have a question like this. Um, someone told me Amazon has lots of restrictions for private label sellers. Doesn't let you do anything with customer's info. Yes, more or less that is correct. Amazon owns the customer. They do not want you, it's not your customer. It's Amazon's customer and they're selling them your product essentially. So it's kind of an interesting marketplace. It's not the same as like selling on your own website or something. Um, you don't have very much customer info and what you do have, you're only allowed to have limited communication with them. So yes, that's true. These aren't like, don't just don't think of them as your customers. But you know, like I said, like everyone always is like so hard, like, oh, Amazon's bullying us, blah, 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 blah. Keep in mind though, like we are allowed to use their marketplace where there's like a freaking billion, jamillion customers on there every single day with their credit cards out with prime memberships that are ready to purchase. So it's still an amazing marketplace with a ton of traffic and it's the easiest way to get started selling these physical products to companies. So yeah, they aren't your customers and you don't get a lot of info, but there's still tons and tons of benefits of it. With that being said, Thank you guys very much for tuning in. I have to get back to work. Like I said, we have a lot of exciting stuff going on at Jungle Scout, so I need to go do it. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. If you're tuning in from YouTube, I'd suggest you do so so you get notified about other live videos. I don't always announce all of them. Sometimes I just go live and uh, tell you guys what I'm thinking about or answer your questions or whatever. If you're subscribed, then you get notified of that, and then you can come and hang out like you have them. Uh, with that being said, we're wrapping it up. I hope everyone has a great and productive day, and I will see you next Thursday. Adios.